Thank you for joining iMeet. When you hear the tone, you will be the 15th person to join the meeting. This meeting is now being recorded. Hey everybody, good afternoon. This is David Blake with uh, Tuesday Tech Talk. And today we're going to quickly review the last uh, last few days in the market, try to figure out what's going to happen next. We'll look at a couple of different sectors that uh, I think may be due for a little bounce in here. And uh, what we do is, if it's your first uh, meeting, we're gonna, we talk about 20, 25 minutes, and I open it up to some questions. And you can ask, uh, we'll discuss individual stocks, industries, targets, anything else you have in mind. And um, what I want to do today is uh, we're going to have something a little bit different for you all. After I, after I go over a couple of couple of things with the different indexes. We have Matt that's going to join us today and uh, go over the, just give you a little sample of the new site that, that should be available over the next couple of weeks. Um, if after you see that, maybe uh, if you want to give us some feedback, that'd be dynamite, we, whether things you like or things you hate. But anyway, last week we talked a little bit about the, forget about selling in May. Um, it's more likely that Dow Jones is going to join the S&P 500 and NASDAQ at record highs this month. And it still looks like the market wants to work its way higher here. So let's take a look at some different charts and see what we have. Um, first thing we want to look at here is the uh, uh, the Dow Jones. Now, last week, um, we were up for a third week in a row. Not much. Gains were kind of marginal. Uh, actually, the Russell 2000 was down a, a smidgen. But uh, the CTI is at a plus 9. Uh, it drops to a plus 7 this week, but stays bullish for a few more weeks after that. So I think... We, we will have time to make some of our, uh, our our targets. Momentum actually went down a touch last week, mainly because uh, we're, we're still neutral, and we've really been in an incredible uh, tight range. As you can see, this area uh, right here. I mean, this is this is almost unheard of the, uh, to see something like this going, which is really is, the momentum is just kind of on hold. And you know, I think part of that is that uh, you know, the French elections had people on the sidelines a little bit. They wanted to make sure that we didn't get any surprises like the Brexit deal on that. But um, we also had sentiment last week was uh, in neutral. But we did have a little bit of pickup in the strength indexes, especially in the NASDAQ, which shows that we, we're still getting some good accumulation. Now, what I want to show you here, over here on the Dow Jones is we can see this descending trend line, which we gapped up and above it uh, a, couple, a couple weeks ago. And then we gapped up again on, on the second day of that big rally. Since then, we've kind of you know, pulled back a little bit to where the gap was, and then we've started to work our way a little bit higher. And what's also nice about this, you have this rounding bottom, almost uh, kind of like a cup and handle, but it's uh, not quite like that. But um, when you see a rounding pattern like this, it's something that, that uh, is bullish. And we do have a little bit of negative divergence showing up over here and down here, but uh, I think with the advanced decline line moving up and all, I think we'll see the Dow Jones probably join the S&P 500 and NASDAQ at record high here over the next uh, you know, probably couple of days. Now here's the NYSE advanced decline line. Again, this is found at the market at a glance uh, piece on the uh, homepage. And this is generally looked at as a uh, leading indicator of market direction. And as long as this thing uh, is headed up, it means more stocks are being accumulated and declining. This thing will normally top out about three months before the actual market tops out. So, you know, this thing can work its way lower, and, and stocks can still work a little bit higher. Now, but I don't see any signs yet that we're uh, in for a uh, sustained pullback. So this this is uh, actually confirming that prices are probably going to head head higher on the New York. Uh, here we have the S&P 500, very, very similar to the uh, Dow Jones. Again, we have the descending trend line, which it kept bumping up against over throughout uh, March, and after we made that new high in April, gapped up above that, gapped up above the 50-day. And then again, we have this little rounding uh, bottom area here like this that uh, looks good. You're not, you're not looking at seeing as much negative divergence in this. So um, again, we're, we're making a new high every day, a very narrow trading range. We're um, at that 2,400 level again today. Let me see. We're at uh, we're 2,401. I think once you get through this 2,401, 2,402 area, you're going to see this thing jump to about 2,410. And our target on the uh, S&P 500 is about 2,440, 
2430, 2440, that area, that'll be a resistance to off of the pivot level. And um, uh, like I said, the volume, volume is uh, still steady, actually it's picking up across here while we're going sideways, that's, uh, that's bullish. The RSI uh, was showing a little bit of negative, not negative momentum, but flat momentum is starting to pick up also. And I think this, you know, very much, very similar to the Dow Jones. I think we're going to come in here one day and, and just, just start to see this thing, you know, maybe have a, have a good 10, 15 point update. Now here's the NASDAQ. Uh, we already had that breakout, which we looked at a couple weeks ago, where it was in the sideways trading range for a long time, uh, getting confirmation, uh, no negative divergence here on the different technical indicators. Um, and then we're breaking out and just kind of stair-stepping uh, higher every day. And one of the things on this, uh, you know, we reached 6,100, which was our target a while back. I, I think we've got enough momentum to, to hit 6,200, uh, if, if not a little bit higher. We're at 6,123 right now. The big cap uh, stocks, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, Microsoft, they're all marching higher. Uh, they're overly weighted on this. Um, again, uh, the, the technical indicators are, are not showing any negative divergence to me at all. And actually, volume is picking up a little bit as we're stepping higher. I think, you know, again, the, the uh, getting, getting this French election behind us, there's a couple more elections coming up, but nothing as important as the France one. And then we have, um, uh, I think you're seeing a little bit less saber rattling going on with the, uh, uh, you know, between North Korea and, and, and Trump. That's, that's also bullish. Now, here is the uh, NASDAQ advanced decline. Not as robust as the uh, New York by any means. I thought we were going to, I was hoping we were going to get a little uh, break out of this sideways action we've been in here. But we, we still can, but what this is telling you that a lot of that breakout is because of the, the big cap tech stocks. Um, one of the things that, that is, is preventing this from going higher, I believe, is that, um, we, that the biotechs, even though they're in the healthcare uh, sector, which I like, the biotechs are, are having a hard time getting to that $300 dollar range with the IBB. We'll take a look at that. But again, this is not really much of negative divergence to me. If this was down here, I'd be more concerned. But I just I think that the uh, strength and the overweighting of the big cap uh, names in the NASDAQ will uh, continue to move higher on this thing. Now, here's the OEX, uh, the S&P 100, the OEX index, NASDAQ 100. And uh, what, uh, I'm surprised this isn't actually more, but um, this is this is the big cap uh, uh, names. You can see this; it's making new highs. It had a had like a little bit of a double top here, and now we're breaking above that. Um, again, the other thing that reason this isn't going higher is because a lot of the big cap biotechs that are in this are sideways to down. So um, this is this is also confirming though that the uh, Nasdaq should work its way higher. Okay, another one I want to look at, which. Uh, some, of, some people have asked me some questions about this is the VIX. Um, some people call this the fear gauge. It actually is, uh, you know, how much premium is in some of the, uh, the, pre, uh, the options going forward. And this is the trading at about a 10-year low in here. Yesterday it went down to 9.77. We're actually a little bit lower today, even 9.68. And uh, uh, you're not, you're not going to get a sharp market correction when this is down that low. Part of it is, uh, you know, these things where you start to see it going up. This is heading into that French election. Uh, people get a little bit nervous because there's some results, something going on that um, you know, could affect the market a little bit. You'll see this thing start to inch up if we're, uh, we're going to have something like we're going to get like, you know, four or 500 point uh, a pullback. So this is still, even though some people say this is bearish, it also, but it, 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 it is bearish because it means the traders are too complacent. And if something would happen, you know, we could, they'd be more anxious to sell. But, uh, generally, this will work its way a little bit higher, like, like in this area, when um, there's some, some uh, cause of concern and, and, and something in the world events, you know, whether a Greek uh, default on their bonds or something like that. But um, this, this point, this continues to look to me like we're going to continue working a little bit higher on the, on the broader market. And, uh, and unless this thing would really go, you know, make an all-time low, which I doubt, um, that might be some concern. But, you know, you have, you have the low rates. You're probably going to get a quarter of a, of a point in, in June with the uh, election results and the dollar, uh, you know, with the euro strengthening a little bit and euro show, and the European economy showing more growth. That's, that's, probably, that's good for the broader market. It's been a long, long time since we've seen that Europe and uh, Southeast Asia, not 
counting on China right now, but uh, some of these other economies all expanding at the same time, and that should be able to support uh, prices going forward in, in, the, in the whole market. Now, uh, I want to touch on a couple things. Uh, you know I've disliked the energy sector for quite a while. This is going back to December, and you can see this uh, gradual move down here. You know, oil, crude oil prices went up to 55. I had a $45 price target, which we hit last, I believe, Thursday or so. And then we uh, uh, had a, had a, uh, a sell-off bottom there where we had a capitulation low. We actually hit about 43.50. We're uh, right about 46 right now. Uh, I've been telling you, you, know, you maybe get some trades on, on oil. I think right at this, this stage with this going bottom, I showed you here with the uh, energy sector, not oil itself, but the energy sector looks like it has a kind of a double, maybe triple bottom down here. I, I think you could probably get yourself a trade now that the elections are over, up to this uh, descending trend line. I would look to buy maybe the refiners. I don't have a list of stocks for you, I mean, not necessarily the big oil, oil stocks, but I think you could probably get a little bit of a, uh, a bounce in this thing. Um, you know, this, uh, this also coincides buying them in here for the uh, summer, uh, summer driving season, so it's, so it's not only kind of a bounce off of the triple bottom, but you have a, a seasonal play to boot in here. Uh, the economy's good. I think that we'll probably have a pickup in driving coming up in the summer months. So that could uh, you know, get analysts to say, well, okay, we're going to get a little higher prices on oil, and that could that could you know take oil back up to the you know forty-eight, fifty-dollar range for a little bit of a trade. If you see the uh, oil come down, this isn't oil chart, it's actually, but if you see oil come down to uh, and break that forty-five area again, uh, you might take your profit at that level. Uh, because if we, if we break 43 and 42, you, you could get a, a, a retracement all the way back to around that 35 to 38 dollar range. I, I don't uh, necessarily expect that. But some some people think that that's that's your downside target. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave mine at the 45 dollar range, where I think we've already hit that, and we can go sideways to work our way uh, a little bit a little bit higher than that. Okay, another one that I want you to take a look at. We had this sideways trading in the in the material sector. Had a little bit of a breakout. It was actually one of the top sectors last week, and then now you're pulling back into the uh, in, back into the trading range. That's something I want you to keep an eye on. Um, we're down again about a half a percentage point today, coming down here to test the the 50-day uh, uh, moving moving average. Now, one of the things that uh, people will say on that, and that with the materials and all, is that perhaps we're seeing a little bit in crude oil coming down too. Perhaps we're seeing a little bit of a, a slowdown that's not showing up yet in the economic numbers. We'll have to see. But on the uh, uh, materials, if we uh, if we don't get back above this area right here, we or we come down around to the uh, XLB around the 5240 area, you may want to lighten up on uh, some of those stocks. Um, you know, because if you're seeing copper coming down, you're seeing uh, a lot of the different commodities um, coming down in price as the dollar was coming down. I don't have a chart. I don't have a chart of UUP. I should have brought it down. We got a, dollar, a bounce in a dollar today, but um, you don't like to see the commodities in a dollar uh, going down at the same time. Okay, over here we have uh, uh, this is the healthcare sector. Again, you see this little coming down here, but you see this rounding little bottom here. They're coming out. Look like we're going to break out to new highs. Uh, XLV is up a quarter point, a quarter percent today. Um, I think you're probably this, this double top that you see in place. I think we can get, especially if we get the uh, 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 biotechs to break that IBB to break through 300. I think you'll see this thing go up, and that'll help push that Nasdaq up to that 6200. A little bit of negative divergence in some of the indicators. This is a mistake down here, but um, you know you'd like to see this momentum, the 14-day RSI, pick back up over 70 at 75 or so. Um, and it did stay up above 40 on this pullback, which is means that we're still in a bullish trend. To keep an eye on that. Uh, I do like that. Some of the different uh, groupings of uh, health on the health uh, care sector, uh, medical supplies, and some of those are actually some of the leading industries. So uh, again, if we can get the IBB above 300, we're in good shape. Now here's here's the uh, iShares Nasdaq Biotech ETF. You can see up to 300, up to 300, up to 300, up to 300, up to 300. Just cannot break through that. So you have a one, two, three, four, almost five times you've tried to get this up here. A little bit of negative divergence, but it's not enough to where I'm, I'm uh, freaking out a little bit on that. So 
I think we can actually see that. Um, yeah, I think we will see that over the next uh, time period. Uh, that breakthrough 300. If it did, if it if it does, uh, we're we're up three dollars and 34 cents today. Up one one over one percent today. Um, that is going to be are you coming back up above this, uh, this this trend line. If you see that, that's going to be a kickoff for you that we could get a big move in in all three uh, uh, indexes. To uh, you know, to that the 21,500 in the Dow, the 2,400, 2,430 in the uh, S&P, and the 6,200. That would, I think, the biotechs could could hold the key. That in the uh, in the transports for us to get our our next big move higher. Okay, last one I want to show you real quick before I bring Matt in here. This is the uh, financial sector. I told you I, I, we were kind of a little bit, uh, you know, if you, you had some, you could take a profit or or hold on to it and look to. Uh, uh, average down or buy some more if we got down to this area. Okay, we've got like a little bit of a double bottom. It looks like good support across here. We're, we've bounced off this over the last two and a half weeks. Um, a June rate hike at this stage looks like we're probably, um, it's going to happen in June. That that's, shouldn't cause too much of a problem. I think you can begin to uh, nibble away at some of the regional banks and also some of the uh, uh, you know the money center banks too. This, this uh, descending trend line and the break above it, uh, is strong. You're you're battling the 50-day on the XLF, which is at uh, $23. Currently, we stand at uh, we're at 23.87. That okay? That's 23.84 was the 50-day moving average on that, I guess. Um, we're at 23.84. So uh, you're right at that thing. If you break above that. You can probably get a nice trade on some of the financials. I do want to bring up one other last thing before I bring Matt in here. Uh, there's an ETF. It's called EUFN. It is kind of stretched. I was going to pull that up, but we don't we don't cover it in Market Edge yet. I'll, I'll try to get it in there this week. But that's a, a way you can play some of the uh, European Union banks. That I, I, I noticed on it. I uh, looked it up just to see if there was one uh, we could participate in. Uh, it's, it's already had had a pretty strong move, which I don't I don't like, uh, especially after this France election. You, you had a big pop up in European banks. So, but uh, if you want to look at that and, and maybe buy some on a pullback, EUFN would be something how, a way you could play the uh, a financials bouncing back in um, you know in, in Europe. Okay, I got I got a, one quick question down here, and then I'm going to bring Matt in. Uh, what are the ETFs for the VIX, Craig? I have a uh, I'm going to send you a link uh, after this is over. If you will send uh, send me a message to uh, the doc at marketedge.com and ask this, I'm going to send you. We did a webinar uh, about a year and a half ago uh, describing all the VIX, uh, different ETFs that you can use, some some of the leveraged ones. There's some trading rules that I included at that time um, that we can put put on. Maybe we can put it up on the site for you. But uh, there's some different things that you can look at if you're trying to buy you know, looking for a, a fallback in the VIX. I don't look for the VIX to go from 9 to 15 anytime soon, but um, I'll, if you'll email me, I'll try to answer that for you a little bit later. Okay, I'm going to get the uh, screen ready now for uh, Matt, um, and you can ask some questions to him afterwards. Uh, what I guess we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to open the screen up so he can drive on this thing. Again, this is just going to be a quick demo of the new site. Um, Please uh, send your uh, your response to it back to us. Uh, you know, whether it's positive or negative, uh, we'd like to see what what happens here. Hopefully, I can pull this thing up here. Okay, we're gonna do a screen share. That should be it. Okay, this should be it. And here is the new site. And I'll let Matt take over from here. Hey, everybody. I'm Matt. Um, I'm one of the designers who, and developers who worked on this. Um, so what we've got here is basically all of the same content as Market Edge as you know it today, but just in a new look, um, a new feel with some uh, changes to the way things work. Um, but hopefully not changes that are going to throw you off too much. Got the stocks page where you can search for stocks. It'll pull up all of your information on whatever stock you, you're, you're looking for. You've got your second opinion, your company profile, 
financials, so on and so forth. We've got industry groups. ETF Center, industry groups is a separate tab, if you remember it used to be in advanced tools. ETF Center, we've got the ability to hover over um, and look at the charts of these particular ETFs. In Stockwatch, you can hover over and look at the charts of your particular uh, uh, stock watch uh, stocks. So this will give you a quick glimpse of the chart. Stockwatch supports 10 or more stock watch lists nowadays. That's an improvement. It used to be a limit of 10. Um, it's a little bit easier to edit your stock watch lists. To add a stock, you uh, you you really just go here and you you find a st find whatever stock you want to add and you click that and you add it. Um, nice and easy. Trading ideas. Um, we've surfaced some of the content. Uh, to make it easier for you to um, to use. We also uh, have done the same thing with advanced tools. Uh, and, and when you run across a definition, so if you if you come across a uh, a heading that you don't know the definition of, you can click the question mark next to it and it'll give you a, a definition for what this thing means. So obviously opinion might be relatively straightforward, but some of the more obscure ones, ADXR, stuff like that, uh, you can get a definition of. Um, we've also got definitions for the uh, trading ideas and advanced tools themselves. So early entry longs, what does that mean? We'll break it down for you what exactly an early entry long is. Um, we also have a charting tool built into uh, the front end now, or into Market Edge, that has trend lines. So you can see here, I can draw a trend line. It's got Fibonacci retracements. It's got channels. You can do a channel and do that. You can remove them all. Um, you can add other kinds of charts. Um, so really, the best thing to do is just play around with it. Um, and in order to get access to this, basically all you need to do is send, uh, send us an email at support, to support at marketedge.com and we'll set you up with access, assuming you're an existing uh, MarketEdge customer. Um, and that's basically it. The, the best browser to use it in right now is Chrome, but it works in everything else. Um, it's just it works best in Chrome. Um, that's, that's basically what we got. We've got um, some market indicators that we surface. So now market posture and CTI are on the front page. We've got our market recap right here, which is uh, so basically everything that was available on in Market Edge as it exists today is available in this new interface. And for a while, we're going to have the new interface for people who want to use that, and then the old interface for people who are used to that transfer over at your leisure. It's not an either or type thing. When, when do we expect to have this out for everybody? It's out now, so anyone can request access. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so it's out now and live, and anyone can get access. And will there uh, current stock charts, stock watch charts uh, be in there automatically? Yes, their stock watch lists will carry over. Their custom report types will carry over and any screening tool filters that they've defined will also carry over. Do we have the uh, the, uh, the, the old video uh, help things? Are they available? Yes, the video is available too um, over here in video tutorials, but it's, we haven't updated the videos to be about the new site yet. Um, they, up here they can also what, log out, is that it? Yeah, they can also the log out. If some people they would like to log out, uh, they've asked for that before. Uh, you can now log out and you're going to leave it. Oh, and another cool thing I forgot to mention was you can now export lists. So if I want to export my research list, boom, I hit that. It exports it to a CSV. I click on it, and it will pull up in Excel or whatever program you're using to open up uh, spreadsheets. And here we go. And I've got my 
stock watch list exported with whatever columns I'm, I'm showing at the moment. So you can do whatever you need to do with that. Um, it's sortable. We can sort by long and void. We can sort by anything. Their, their, their current, uh, when they go to the, to the uh, website, their current ID will, will fit or, or no? You, their you current, do one. Their, um, that's a good question. I think we've been using their existing username, but then they'll have to change their password specifically for the new site. They'll be able to continue using their old password for the old site, but I think that they'll need to put. We'll send you an email. With I, 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 I think if, if you request to uh, to be a beta user for this, uh, you'll use your current ID. We will send you a password to go in. Then you then you can change it. Uh, once you get that special password, you can change it back to your old password to get into the site. I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sit back down here and see if anybody has any questions on the new site. Uh, let's see if we can get on here. Uh, what does that mean? Okay, does anybody, does anybody have any questions on this? Nothing coming in? Okay. Well, anyway, I hope, I hope you guys, I'd like to see you, you know, if you want to try it. Please send us a, an email to uh, the support at marketedge.com. And once you do try it, uh, again, I encourage you to, to please send us what your thoughts, things you'd like to see change, things you like, things you dislike. Uh, here's a question come in real quick, a couple of them now. Uh, yes, I want to try. We'll email. Can Schwab subscribers also yep. look at the beta? Yeah. If you go to your Schwab, TD Ameritrade, uh, can TD Ameritrade do it? E Trade? Um, I think everyone. I think everyone should yeah. be able to do it. So uh, again, just just send that email in, and we'll uh, we'll get you set up later on today. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I appreciate you taking time from your busy day to join me. I hope you got something out of this. If you have any questions that you'd like to uh, like me to answer later on, uh, just email the doc at marketedge.com. Have a good week, and we'll talk to you next week.